This is your host, Gabe Morales, coming back at you with another informative episode, this time on what I feel are the top 10 Nuestra Familia members of all time. I'll start off with original Nuestra Familia Mexicana founder Gonzalo Chalo Hernandez. Chalo is a very interesting figure, and I've communicated with members of his family for my book. Simply put, there might have never been an NF had it not been for Chalo. He was born in Texas on January 10, 1945. Then his family moved to Bakersfield, California. He would have been the number one padre when the organization started, but he decided to pass and give that position to Little John Valdez from a gang called Little Valley in the eastern part of Los Angeles County. Then, when Little John paroled, the position went to Juan Valdez from Bassett. Yes, the two first official leaders of the Nuestra Familia Mexicana were named Valdez, one Juan and one John. Juan means John in Spanish. So when I was first writing my book, I thought these were one and the same individuals. As I listened to the stories of both, investigators and ex-cons would always say Juan and John Valdez interchangeably. So it was very easy to confuse them in retrospect until I saw their mugshots one day and realized they were totally different. Here is a Nuestra Familia Mexicana Constitution. Yes, it was Nuestra Familia Mexicana. But that was changed after Babo Sosa took power, since he was Puerto Rican and not Mexican. Per his personal memoirs, the Nuestra Familia was established to organize Chicanos to awaken them to their strength and unity and importance of establishing programs concentrating on the young before they fell into the system's whirlpool. Chalo states he concentrated on finding members who had potential to meet this goal, but also took in some prison hustlers. Chalo goes on to state that when he arrived in San Quentin from Soledad, there was under a dozen NFM members. In 1968, he suggested that if members joined the organization, they joined for life. He said he would allow those who did not want to make this lifetime commitment the opportunity to just walk away. Most did not want to swear allegiance to this group, and so it was reduced to just five members. who held five positions as office holders, according to the Constitution. To help promote their goals, Chalo started an inmate newsletter at San Quentin called Azteca that was later named Aslan, written in both Spanish and English. He recalls that they met in secret until the shoe war incident of September 1968 when the organization was exposed. He put on the very first Norse familiar tattoo on his elbow, as seen here using stylish letters he found in a San Francisco newspaper. And other members then started putting the same letters on their bodies, often in Old English. Chala also insisted on a don't-use-drugs law for the organization. He decided it would be a good idea to recruit new blood at the Dual Vocational Institute in Tracy, California, since it held many youthful offenders. Chalo and George Delgado Cisneros from Santa Clara County approached a young supporter at San Quentin who was being transferred to DVI and verbally gave him orders and instructions on the new Nuestra Familia Mexicana Constitution and permission to bring in new members who agreed to abide by its rules. He had to memorize it because they did not want to chance giving him a hard copy of it and being caught up in any investigations by CDC. Chalo notes he was stabbed in San Quentin's B-section after initial attack on the Mafia. He recalled that Sergeant Bill Hankins brought in Freddy Gonzalez and Juan Lips Valdez to the hospital and tried to prevent further bloodshed. Freddy and Lips wanted to retaliate immediately, but Chalo shut down the idea as being too risky, and it gave them time to rebuild membership in the general population. Once Chalo paroled to Bakersfield in the early 1970s, he was the subject of assassination attempt by his own cousin, Mexican Mafia leader, Rodolfo Cheyenne Cadena, according to former Special Services Unit agent and later Associate Warden and Deputy Director Tony Casas, now deceased, Cadena was arrested just prior to him making the hit. Cadena was under surveillance by Casas, and it was found he had a gun on him, was given a parole violation, and never again saw the streets. 
Shalo intended to organize on the outside, focusing on Chicano couples with children. He also wanted to mentor youth groups for La Causa. But before he could put his plans into place, it was found out that SSU had recruited at least two informants to spy on the organization. Chalo decided that the organization had been infiltrated and wasn't sure who to trust. So he formed a small security squad called Los Dorados, which is a name that Pancho Villa's forces had during the Mexican Revolution in 1910. Chalo began organizing all the way from San Jose down to San Diego. He believed that other NF were also debriefing. And it is said that Chalo himself gave information to Sergeant Bill Hankins to benefit the organization. When later NF General Babo Sosa wanted to join the NF, Chalo turned him down as being too brash. But Babo was voted in anyway by the rest of the members. And Babo never forgot this slight by Chalo. Chalo was deemed no good by 1977 when Babo Sosa was the sole Nuestro General in the NF launched a house cleaning campaign. Chalo was also accused of stealing money from the NF bank. He denied any of this but thought it was a setup to help force him quit the organization. The NF actually attempted to kill him in Bakersfield in the late 1970s by doing a drive-by shooting on his house, and members of his family were hit. Charles states that he never officially debriefed, and he did another prison term in the early 35668 under E as in Edward 35668 with very few problems. I have many pictures of Chalo in his later years, even one on his deathbed, but I made promises to his family not to release them, and so I won't. Juan Lips Valdez was born in the 1940s, during the time of the Zoot Suit Riots, the same era as many future Nos Familia and Mexican Mafia members were born. Lips' brother, Philip, worked at a community program in the San Gabriel Valley's Bassett neighborhood. Today, this area is claimed by La Eme, but back then... There were Mexican Mafia from the north and West Familia from the south. While some have told me that Juan was just a dope fiend, in his younger, younger days, he was definitely into the Chicano movement, probably due to the influence of his brother. And BGF comrades highly respected the NF Brown brothers, as is shown in this revolutionary poem dedicated to Juan Valdez. Valdez was a key figure in the shoe war, as seen in this picture taken in the parole board hearing room at San Quentin at the direction of investigative sergeant Bill Hankins. A few months prior is when the shoe war had kicked off and there were fights that occurred and major rioting broke out involving at least 22 inmates wounded. Staff identified many Mexican inmates including Mexican mafia members Tati Torres and Pancho Amaro who fought hand-to-hand -hand combat with Lips but then Lips was later stabbed and taken to the infirmary. Like I said, prior to the shoe war, some North Familia Mexicana members had been informants to Hankins in order to keep the, the Mexican Mafia off the yard. This is well documented in the postmortem book taken from Hankins' writing called Alpha Guard. On July 11, 1972, NF leader Juan Valdez was stabbed again, this time by Mexican Mafia members Victor Beaver Mesa and Ronnie Salazar. Mesa was a major hitman for the AMA, and Salazar was like a son to Joe Morgan, so much so that he once took a murder rap for Papa Joe. It is believed that Morgan personally issued the hit on Valdez and his organization, which he viewed as a threat to AMA's power and control. Now, this went against Cheyenne Carina's peace moves and talks with the North Familia. So you could say that Joe and other Mexican Mafia members sabotaged Cadena's campaign for peace with the NF. But definitely, Joe Morgan did not have Cadena set up to be killed, like is shown in the movie American Me. That part is totally fiction. More than likely, he warned Cadena not to trust those guys, Karna. The former head of the Special Services Unit, Brian Perry, recalls that when Lips was released from prison, he had posted NF security guards in his Bassett Grande neighborhood, located in the San Gabriel Valley, as he greatly feared even more Mexican Mafia attacks. Lip soon dropped out, became hooked on Chiva, and debriefed to California Gang Task Force members Monterey Park PD Detective Robert Mokmurill, CDC Pro Agent Don Elder, and Department of Justice Agent Joe Moody. Robert Rio Sosa was born on December 20th, 1945, and was a key player in the shoe war. At evening feeding, several more confrontations between the Mexican Mafia and the Nuestra Familia occurred. Inmates with the Nuestra Familia faction, Pollo Montoya, Marty Aguero, and Babo Sosa, then killed MA affiliate 
in Diamond Street member Crick Gallegos. Today, September 16th, is a symbolic birth date of the NF, and it's pretty much been all-out war until recent times with the end of hostilities agreement. There was widespread dissatisfaction over Juan Valdez's leadership, and so an open election was held in 1973 with a new constitution being implemented at CIM Palm Hall under Nuestro General Robert Babo Sosa. And Sosa de- stated that he found out he was elected by Aguila, saying that he'd been handed the keys to the supermarket. According to former NF member Rick Sundown Riley, it was Death Row Joe who invented the military structure. Others said it was Babo's idea. At any rate, Babo became Nuestro General and the supreme leader. Now, Sosa had ties to San Diego, where his mom lived in Imperial Beach, but also had been locked up in the Santa Barbara County Jail in the early 1960s. Sosa, per prison gang expert Tony Casas, was a lot different than Juan Valdez and Chalo Hernandez's revolutionary concepts of the Nuestra Familia. Sosa envisioned himself more like a young Michael Corleone, played by actor Al Pacino in the Godfather movie that had just recently come out. By 1970s, the Sosa brothers ran drugs from Tijuana via the San Diego NF Regiment. Sosa was also very close to NF member Joko Mendoza, who was directly involved in the killing of Shane Carena in December 1972. There was an NF member named Jackie Pesera who dropped out in 1976. Pesera's sister, Linda, married Bubble. When Sosa was released from prison, he was soon arrested for a parole violation and subsequently indicted in Monterey County on a federal RICO case a few years later. Many NF members criticized Sosa for using heroin, which was supposed to be against the rules, yet ordering other NF members who were using to be hit or killed. In the RICO case, the defendants pled guilty to avoid the death penalty since they were already doing life without. Due to the RICO case and a campaign against him by rival Black Bob Vasquez, Death Row Joe Gonzalez, who was his number one captain and right-hand man, were both impeached from leadership. But Sosa retained a legion of hardcore followers, many who were housed at Soledad, but also he had some at DVI where the majority of NF were. He officially dropped out in 1984, and I actually bumped into him at New Folsom on a facility PC yard in the early 90s, shortly before he died. Robert Death Rule Joe Gonzalez was born on October 28, 1940, and was from Oxnard. Colonia Chiques. He committed a murder with Daniel Alarcón on July 30th, 1965, while riding around in Daniel's car. His younger brother, David Alarcón, age 15, had been driving because Dan and Joe had been drinking. They ran out of gas around 10 p.m. and decided to walk to the Alarcón's home when they encountered three older men who had been drinking, and a fight erupted between the two groups. Allegedly, the older man pulled out knives. Gonzalez also pulled out a knife and stabbed two in the opposing group. Bobby Joe Barkley, a young friend of David Alarcón, allegedly took one of the wallets. One of the individuals they encountered, Jesus Ontiveros, died, and Juan Baco Luajo was seriously injured. Daniel Alarcón and Joe Gonzalez were convicted and placed at San Quentin's death row. Thus, how death row Joe Gonzalez got his moniker. He later appealed, and the court found that there was intent to rob but he had his sentence reduced to life without parole. As I mentioned earlier, there was a new constitution written after the 1973 elections, the authors of which were Death Row Joe, with the assistance of Pete Saco Gutierrez, Black Bob Vasquez, Joker Mendoza, and Juan Manzanas Colon. Now, I can verify that Sosa did write the very first 14 rules of the NF Warrior. It is interesting to me that rule number five refers to a structure of the organization. I believe this was re formatted later as the 14 Bonds in Folsom 4A in the early 1980s. This is where some may say that the idea of the Nuestra Raza or Northern Structure formed in the 1970s, but that is debatable. Death Row Joe Gonzalez, Glenn Hobo Holden, and Felix Figuerelli of Leos were made NF captains, and there was a total of 10 of those. According to Death Row Joe's debrief, NF regiments were in place by 1975, starting with Fresno, and San Jose came on in July 1976 with the addition of squad procedures. NF banks and pay schedules started in November 1976. Like I said, Babo Sosa and Death Row Joe were impeached by Black Bob Vasquez, but Black Bob actually got along with Death Row Joe, as seen in his picture in earlier days. After Death Row Joe was impeached, and testified against the Nuestra Familia, he went into the Witness Protection Program. 
Last I heard, Death Row Joe was still alive and in custody at an undisclosed location. Robert Dionoso Black Bob Vasquez was born on December 30th, 1942, into a farm worker family who lived in Gilroy, commonly known as Hilas, the garlic capital of the U.S. Vasquez's father, Chino, was very close to United Farm Workers Union President Cesar Chavez, but there were no official ties between the West from there and United Farm Workers. Later on, the Nortenos stole the well bird from the UFW. Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta carried the casket of Vasquez's dad, Chino, who was their respected fellow labor organizer in 1978 when he died. But Black Bob was not allowed to attend by prison officials. Also, it is not true that his father was ever an NF member, as some have alleged, but he was a street gang member in his youth, and his son did the same thing, but did become NF. As a young man, Vasquez got into trouble and was sent to the California Youth Authority for knifing an unidentified African-American male with a knife. After his CYA time, he was sent to San Quentin at the age of 21. In 1963, Vasquez had sisters who ran heroin into San Quentin for him after his transfer from Vacaville for treatment of a drug-induced intestinal condition. It is an interesting fact to me that Black Bob was actually first approached to join the Mexican Mafia by shot caller Adolf Champ Reynoso in the early 1960s, but Vasquez declined to do so. He was introduced to the most familiar prison gang when he met nine Chicanos at Soledad in the mid-60s and states that he was in close contact with Bruce Wero Morgan. Impressed by Vasquez's drug connections on the outside, they inducted him at San Quentin in the late 1960s where the NF had grew to about 25 members. But Black Bob was definitely not an original member. Juan Samaripa was a good friend of Bob's and killed by the MA in 1967. In 1969, Vasquez paroled and was put in charge of the streets in his area of Gilroy, and began doing robberies in the greater San Jose area. In 1974, Black Bob Vasquez stabbed an Aryan at EVI Tracy, which earned him more time and helped his reputation in later rise to power. Black Bob was very close to Ezequiel Cornejo Lopez, who was actually Bob's cuñado, or brother-in-law, and Cornejo's sister helped push El Corrido de Nuestra Familia that you heard on the intro of this video. Vasquez moved for Sosa to be impeached, which finally happened in 1981. But like I said, Sosa still did have some supporters after that until 84. So there was actually two groups of NF that CDC referred to, NF1 under Sosa or NF2 under Vasquez. Vasquez remained an influential figure in the NF for many years. In fact, I have seen letters in recent years speaking in code talking about this 14-seat RV code for Nuestra Familia and Robert Vasquez. Vasquez picked up the name Coach at Folsom, where he developed the Machina and made members work out. After he paroled from Folsom in 1983, he moved to Gilroy with his wife Hortensia, then moved to Arizona from 1984 to 1988 before returning home to Gilas. Some people considered him a visor when he came back. Others, including his main handler, deny this. When his friend Brom Bob was murdered in 1999, I think that would have ended any feelings Vasquez had for the NF. Last I heard, he is still alive and living near his hometown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Top 10 Most Familiar Leaders of All Time. Part 2 will follow shortly.